Ash Wednesday is a time of naming brokenness. As we enter the season of Lent, we commit to enter also into a season of healing and recovery that requires the naming of what has been shattered as a first step. We take the yoke of responsibility as disciples of Jesus to be the body of Christ, a body of those who need healing and offer healing in the world. The promise of Jesus is that he is with us in our weariness and burdens. We will be living with the stories of Jesus healing in the Gospel of Matthew in this Lent season. We will see how Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives as part of the healing process, no matter how broken. Ash Wednesday developed as a doorway to speaking the truth of our lives, a time to lay the brokenness of life before God. Friends, I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer as we confess our sins to God. Merciful God, we have lived a year of Lent. In the midst of it all, we have seen love shine through at times, but as we look back in this moment, it feels like a year of shattered dreams and shattered peace. We are discouraged. Even though so much feels out of our control, we also see the ways our own faults and failures to love each other fully, to care for the least, to honor your creation, to stand for what is right and good, have contributed to the shattering. And so we come to you in pieces, fragments, broken shells of our past selves. As we walk along the shores of uncertainty and pain, we ask that you meet us here. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time towards greater care. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Throughout the season of Lent, we will be contemplating the symbol of broken glass, sea or beach glass to be specific. An unknown author has said this about the glass fragments that are collected on various shores. Ordinary pieces of tableware or soda bottles are flung into the ocean Years pass or decades, and then one day, there it is upon the shore, 
a small shard from one of those long ago discarded objects. Shifting currents have rounded its edges, abrasion has polished its surface, exposure to the sun has altered its hue. And so when we happen upon it, here amidst the shells and seaweed, we can't help but laugh with joy at what seems a miracle. This ordinary fragment of silica that time and adversity have transformed into something beautiful. Time and adversity, making something beautiful out of that which once seen as ordinary and broken is now considered a transformed and precious piece. This is the journey we undertake. Jesus attended to those considered ordinary, broken, even those deemed unworthy. No matter what, Jesus is the lover of our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. If you cannot speak of your brokenness, your brokenness will speak for you. Peter Rollins Beautiful are those whose brokenness gives birth to transformation and wisdom. John Mark Green Our life is full of brokenness. Broken relationships, broken promises, broken expectations. How can we live with that brokenness without becoming bitter and resentful, except by returning again and again to God's faithful presence in our lives? Henry Nowen.
Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Have you ever been doing the dishes and that glass slips out of your hand at just the right moment to fall on just the right thing in just the right way that it breaks? I'm pretty clumsy and had this one set of glasses that dwindled away quickly, lost to the soap suds of the dishwater time and time again. I got used to draining the water and carefully trying to make sure I got all the pieces before tossing those sparkling clean shards into the trash. After I went through that set of glasses, the next time I made sure to buy a more robust one. I remember one time when I was a kid where my combination of clumsiness and desire to be efficient came to a head and got the best of me. My brother and I each had an assigned set of chores, and one of my main one, ones was dusting our living room. The tightly packed rungs of our banister, the cutout columns that separated the entry from the rest of the living room, the piano, shelves, baseboards, all of it. It was an old house with a lot of wood features, so I went through a lot of pledge. Over in the corner sat an old table with an even older wash basin and pitcher that sat down on the bottom shelf of the table. These were family treasures, and so I tried to be careful with them. I made sure to get around all the detail of the table, the flower pattern that decorated the front, the grooves around the edges, from table surface to the bottom of the legs. I tried to be thorough, but I also needed to dust the baseboards behind that table. So one day I carefully and steadily picked up the whole table, wash, basin, and pitcher and all. I just needed to move it out a little bit so I could reach behind. The distance the table needed to travel was just a few inches, but it was a few inches too many. The wash basin and pitcher slid in just the right way at just the right time, and the pieces collided together at just the right angle to turn this family heirloom into shards. <gasps> oh no, mom, mom, I'm sorry, I cried out. I should have known better. My great grandma's wash basin was a thing of beauty in part because it was so delicate and fragile. The elegant curves and shiny, creamy gl ceramic glaze, the simple, classy swirls and flowers that adorned it, now all that laid in pieces. Pieces that couldn't just be collected and tossed in the trash. My parents taught me grace and understanding. Yes, I made many mistakes and my brother and I excelled at getting on each other's nerves and so on our parents as well, but they always led with love. My mom looked at that treasure in all its brokenness with all the memories it held of the grandma she loved so dearly and all the hopes it represented that one day her daughter would have this too. I think Maybe she was a little heartbroken, unsure what these broken pieces meant, but she didn't yell. She didn't lecture. She didn't question. Instead, she went to the kitchen drawer and got the super glue. We picked up the pieces, carried them to the dining room table and combed through the white carpet to make sure that none of the shards had gotten lost. Super glue can do wonders. Somehow it can hold together not just pieces of ceramic, but memories and love. My mom tends to not throw things away that are broken. She fixes them or repurposes them just like her parents did with creativity and ingenuity. 
She knew that basin and pitcher wouldn't be the same, but with some patience and extra strong adhesive, they'd still be that basin and pitcher, family treasures that her daughter would one day have. Those cracks now I like to think of as just added memories and lessons learned, extra reminders of love and care and patience and grace that can be passed on to the next generation. When something is broken, that doesn't mean it's the end. Ash Wednesday is this sacred moment when we proclaim how easily broken we are, when we confront the truth of our fragileness. Jesus came into this world for the lost and broken and forsaken. He sought out those society had discarded like they were nothing more than useless shards. He challenged those who would spend more time gluing back together a run-of-the-mill coffee mug than tending to their neighbor's wounds. He saw this brokenness. But instead of tossing it aside, he offered compassionate, tender, healing care. We all have broken bits in our lives. That's our humanness. Cracks in our hearts, wounds and scars, relationships we don't know how to mend. Some of it's our own doing, and some of it has been done to us. In our pain, we have sharp edges that sometimes cut those who come too close, and sometimes the pieces of our lives seem overwhelming, like it's impossible to hold it all together at once. And this past year especially has added to that overwhelmingness. I don't know about you, but to me, it feels like we've lived at least a decade since last year's Ash Wednesday. Since then, the brokenness and pain of the world has been laid before us. It feels so pervasive and prevalent that there is scarcely a direction we might turn where we will not find it. The dark and dusty ash of this sacred night feels so much more familiar than the promise and hope of that fragrant Easter garden. We have been through a tumultuous time collectively and individually, and we are tired and weary. We still don't know yet what life after this will be, but we know we will be forever changed by these experiences. So this Lenten season, we are setting out on a journey of recovery, renewal, and rest. And the good news that we are journeying towards is that Christ already knows our brokenness in its fullness. And in Christ, that brokenness is not the end. Confronted with the fragments and pieces of our lives, Jesus said, You, beloved one, come to me with all your brokenness and sharp edges, with all your weariness and pain, with your shatteredness and the glued together parts that feel like they're barely holding on, and I will give you rest. I've broken much in my life and have been broken by many too, but I am still me, a beloved child of God, a treasure, a fragile thing of beauty and memory and hope and possibility, and so are you. I hope this season we can learn and grow and heal together. We'll learn from the experiences of our lives, like gracious and loving mothers with super glue, and from a Savior who persistently gathers up all the broken bits. On this Lenten journey, it is my hope that together we will name our brokenness. We will rest in Christ's healing love and we will extend gifts of restoration and renewal to the world around us. So my friends, may you find blessings for the journey ahead. Amen. Having known the tender healing care of Christ's love, we come now to that time in our worship 
when we lift up our gifts of thanksgiving to God in return for what we have already received. You are invited to bring your offerings tonight, offerings of your resources, of your time, and of your talents. If you'd like to make a donation to our ministry here at Zion, you are welcome to mail in a check to our church office, or you can also donate through our website at zionuccindy.net, where you can make those donations using a PayPal account or a credit or debit card. We are incredibly grateful for any and all gifts that allow us to continue to work together to do Christ's healing work in this world. It is because of your support that we can share the good news of God's love. Let us lift up our gifts to God, whatever it is that we have to bring tonight. Let us pray. Creator God, may the gifts we offer today be used to share your love with all in our church, our community, and your world. Amen. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. All the lost, weary soul, in the warmth of your love, may your peace fill our hearts. May we know the love of Jesus by your grace. You console, make us holy. Love. 
rest in your compassion. Come the lost, come the lost, weary soul, weary soul, in the warmth of your love. May your peace fill our hearts. May we know May the we love of Jesus by your grace. Lover of our souls, you who weeps, bleeds, cries, and waits for us and because of us, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. We pray for those who are shattered by violence of circumstances, tumbled by the forces of life and washed up on shores distance from all that feels whole. God, in these moments, we lift up to you the prayers of our hearts. Together we pray that prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ash Wednesday, as the beginning of Lent, developed in the 5th and 6th centuries and was mandated in the 11th century. Although Protestants did not maintain this ritual for the most part, it has come back during the 20th century liturgical movements as an important time for reflection in which we reclaimed this symbol and ritual of our spiritual ancestors. It plays an important role in helping us make meaning in the brokenness of our lives. This year, indeed, we are aware of the fragility of life. Many in our congregation received a bag of ashes in their Lent at Home kits. Now is the time to open that bag. The dusting of ash in here will be plenty. If you did not receive one, you are still invited to mark yourself with a cross. Friends, with this dusty ash, Mark yourself or those in your household. Make a sign of the cross and remember. From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. And now, friends, go with confidence that, though shattered, we are held. 
Begin the journey of recovering your depth of love for all and your joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I will give you rest. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.